Rich Kid Shire has always been cushioned by her parents' financial support. I went to one of the most expensive boarding schools in the world, which costs £100,000 a year. But now a family of four in Northampton are going to give the 19-year-old student a taste of life on the breadline. Ready? Yep. Brace yourself. Hiya. Hi. Hi. You all right? I'm Shira. Hi, Hi. I'm Tara. I'm Paul. And this is Paul. This is Reva. Oh, hi. Look okay. amazing. Thank Come you. in. Hi. Go through. This is the lounge. We do most of our play in here. We change nappies kind of here. <laughs> it's kind of, this is kind of the hub of the house, really. I have several houses dotted okay. around. But um, all of my houses have quite big living areas. Yeah. How many houses do you have? Four properties at the okay. moment. And my parents are just buying another house in Switzerland right okay. now. Wow. So it's going to be five soon. So this is our bedroom. How does this compare to the size of your bedroom? I think the one in Switzerland might be a bit bigger, and same yeah. in um, Texas. And how many bedrooms are there? My house in Durham has 12 rooms and nine bedrooms. Wow. So that's probably the most bedrooms, yeah. I think. This is our utility area, and this is our downstairs slash outdoor toilet. All right. But you don't have an outdoor toilet, do you? <laughs> um, I actually do. We have one at the country house for when we ride the horses. Oh, OK. So it's in the field, just near the stables. Ours is in our house. <laughs> <laughs> the toilet was <laughs> quite shocking and very, very small and outdoorsy. It's surprising that that's their downstairs toilet. It is quite basic and um, obviously there are bits that are a little bit run down still. And her new living quarters? It reminds me of like when we had a living cleaner <laughs> where she would stay. It's all quite a come down for Paul and Tara's well-heeled house guest. Five different houses because there's two in Switzerland. Um, that's just mental. That's pretty cool. A 12 bedroom house in Texas. That's crazy, isn't it? And her <laughs> outdoor toilet where the horses are. <laughs> <laughs> Shira's extravagances are a far cry from Paul and Tara's situation. They've had to make many sacrifices to survive on his meagre income. My wage varies from week to week, so it's usually between sort of 500 and 600 pounds a week. A week. We have Seb in nursery um, part-time three days a week. That's our biggest expenditure. That's about £700 wow. a month. Um, we then have our mortgage, which is about £400 a month. Bills and things come to about another kind of four, £500. And that leaves us about £400 to £500 kind of that we have for food, um, nappies. Once we've kind of bought everything that is standard, um, we have about £200 a month left over. It was really shocking to see that they really didn't have any disposable income for things that I usually spend money on. It is sad that I'm able to do those things and they aren't and they just have to dream about it. The massive wealth gap between the two has been difficult listening. You hear sort of what she spends and what our lives could be like. It's sort of hearing kind of what somebody else has and like the life they live. It's not like a personal attack at all, but it's just hearing that kind of level of wealth. The reality kind of... of that situation compared to ours is, yeah, yeah it's quite hard sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, are you OK? Yeah. <laughs> hearing kind of like the money that you have to spend yeah. on yourself. You don't think about kind of where it comes from and we're sort of like counting kind of like all the pounds that are kind of being spent and kind of working out what we're going to spend on and what we're not going to spend on. And it's just the reality of that wealth. Our life could benefit so much kind of from yeah. a fraction of that. Yeah. Do you think this would kind of impact on how you view things at all? Like, yeah, definitely. I had no idea that the money that I just spent on a holiday could really like help for example, your family for like the whole year. You're such a loving family unit and it's something that I never really had for long because obviously my parents aren't together anymore. Right. And so like seeing you together with your kids and just being such like a happy little family, like it makes me like, it just, it's so sweet to see. <laughs> this is, where we bring Seb quite a lot. It's basically somewhere he can run around like mad and wear himself out so he actually goes to sleep at night. It's completely free, it's brilliant. The park provides plenty of other free activities for the family. One of the hobbies like Sebastian and I have is to go fishing. Oh wow. Okay. Have you ever been fishing before? No, never. Never? <laughs> You're in for a treat. Dressed in high heels and a designer jacket, Shira's looking like a fish out of water. 
she's still willing to give it a go. Do you know what you use for bait for fishing? No. It would be maggots in this case. Oh my god, no, they're alive. <laughs> Your challenge basically is to put him on the end of that hook. Okay, wait. You got him. Oh my god, it's so squishy. It's so squishy. It is very oh squishy. Oh my god, oh my god. You can do this. Oh, this is so gross. Come can on. I just like hold I believe on the in ends you. of my nails? Yeah, if you want. Oh, oh. Don't move me, I'm so sorry. I did yeah, it. Yeah, you did it. Well done. <laughs> oh. Never done anything like that before, and I honestly hate anything slimy. So it was a really big thing for me to touch that and to put it on the hook. Then hold it. She's giving it a go. She sat there. I think this is obviously like something totally different, and I wouldn't touch the maggots if I'm honest. <laughs> right forward. <laughs> and well, let go of the line. Work. Oh, I let go. <laughs> Quality time like this with her family doesn't happen often for Shira. Do you do much on a day-to-day -day basis, kind of, with them? Obviously, with me going to boarding school, we don't have, kind of, like, those moments that much anymore. So, like, I feel like this kind of thing is just, like, this is really valuable. This is something that I probably wouldn't get that often anymore. Yeah. We feel kind of really lucky, actually, that we're able to kind of just do things like this. It's kind of really simple. It doesn't kind of require kind of much, but we kind of get a lot out of it. Yeah. Don't we? And it seems Shira's got something out of the pond. Oh, like up. Then grab the fish. Oh my God, I don't think I can. It's okay, we got it, we got it. Wait, got I don't think fish. I can touch it. It's okay. Is he still alive? He's, he's alive, he'll go back alive. Oh my god, oh my god. Put your hand up there and hold it. There you go, you caught a fish. Your oh my first god. ever fish. <laughs> I can't believe that I caught a fish. Like, it's crazy to me that I even went fishing. So, yeah, it's just been amazing. We'll let him go because he's been out of water for a little while. It's really nice to kind of bring him along to kind of show us sort of some of the things that we do as a family and kind of show that it, like you don't have to spend a lot of money to kind of have a nice time. Um, and she seemed to embrace it. She seemed to kind of recognise kind of the, that, that slow pace, yeah. that kind of like family time, that sort of bonding time. The family's tight financial situation means Paul has to make any home improvements with his own bare hands like a play area for the kids. It would probably cost a fair few hundred pounds to get somebody to do it all and landscape the garden. So it's one of those things, yeah, cut the cost down, do it yourself. Paul's decided to make use of an extra pair of hands to show Shira how rewarding it is to make things yourself. Oh, no. It literally says heavy on the back. It does. It says take care when lifting. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Brace yourself. Yeah. Come on, lift with your legs. <laughs> this is so heavy. Oh my god, I literally can't even lift it up. It's really not that heavy, come on. Ew, why is it tripping? Because they're wet. She'll be a few minutes. Oh. Manual labour's clearly taking its toll on the beauty regime of someone who never normally has to lift a finger. My nails chipped a little bit on the inside, which is unfortunate, but oh well. <laughs> Sunny knife. Slice. That's nice and easy. This is the most exercise I've done all year. And it's not long before she needs some time out. Ow. Wait. Maybe she's never used her foot muscles before. Maybe it's walking around in the high hills that when she's got flat boots on, it's like her feet don't know what to do. <laughs> Injury time, Shira's soon back on shift. And her efforts are impressing her hosts. Wow! So, how's the hard graft going? Yeah, it's actually not bad. Like, it's actually quite fun. Yeah. Because just seeing how, it, like, I already know, like, what it's going to look like completed. Yeah. That kind of, like, makes you want to do it. Do you feel, like, a sense of achievement? Yeah, anyway. it's good fun. <laughs> it's been another valuable lesson for the rich kid. I usually get people to do this for us. We have gardeners and people like that. So um, it was really interesting to really like get into it and do it myself. And it is a lot more rewarding than I thought it would be. She recovered from her cramp. She got her boots back on and she went at it full force and she did a great job. 